Hello, everybody. John Walls here. Welcome to theCUBE and our continuing coverage of Ansible Fest 2021. We now welcome onto theCUBE three representatives from Red Hat. Joining us is Ashesh Badani, who's a senior vice president of products at Red Hat. Ashesh, thank you for joining us today. Thanks for having me, John. You bet. Uh, also with us, uh, Stephanie Shiraz, who is the senior vice president of the Platforms Business Group, also at Red Hat. And Stephanie, how are you doing? Oh, good, thanks. It's great to be here with you, John. Excellent, thanks for joining us. And last, but certainly not least, Joe Fitzgerald, who is the vice president and general manager of the Ansible Business Unit at Red Hat. And Joe, good to see you today. Thanks for being with us. Good to see you again, John. Thanks for having us. It's like like the big three at Red Hat. I'm looking forward to this. Um, Stephanie, let's, let's just jump in with you and let's talk about what's going on in terms of automation in the hybrid cloud environment these days. A lot of people making that push making their way in that direction, everybody trying to drive you know, more value out of the hybrid cloud environment. Uh, how is automation making that happen? How's it making it work? Yeah, we have been focused at Red Hat for a number of years now on the value of open hybrid cloud. We really believe in the value of being able to give your applications flexibility to use the best technology where you want it, how you need it um, and pulling all of that together. But core to that value proposition is making sure that it is consistent, it is secure, and it is able to scale. And that's really where automation has become a core space. So as we continue to work our portfolio and our ecosystems and our partnerships to make sure that that open hybrid cloud has accessibility to everything that's new and relevant in this changing market we're in, the automation space that Ansible drives is really about making sure that it can be done in a way that is predictable. And that is really essential as you start to move your workloads around and start to leverage the diversity that an open hybrid cloud can deliver. You know, when you're bringing this to a client and, and Joe, perhaps you can weigh in on this as well. Um, I would assume that as you're talking about automation, um, there, there's probably a lot of, you know, successful head nodding this way, but also some kind of this way too. There's a little bit of fear, right? Um, and, and maybe just, they have these legacy systems. There's maybe a little distrust. I don't want to give away control, all these things. So how do you all answer, you know, those kinds of concerns when you're talking to the client about this great value that you can drive, but you got to get them there, right? You have to bring them along a bit. It's a great question, John. And look, you know, everybody wants to get to hybrid cloud, as Stephanie mentioned. Uh, that journey is a little complicated. And if you had silos and challenges before you went to hybrid cloud, you're going to have more when you get there. Uh, we work with a lot of customers, and what we see is um, this sort of shift from uh, I would call it low-level task automation to much more of a strategic focus on automation. But there's also the psychology of automation. One of the analysts recently did some research on that, and you know. Imagine just getting in your car and letting the car drive you, you know, down the street to work. People are still not quite comfortable with that level of automation. They sort of want to be able to trust, but verify and maybe have their hands near the wheel. You couldn't take the wheel away from them. Um, we see the same thing with automation. They, they need automation, they want automation, uh, but they need to be able to verify what it is doing, what it did do, what it's going to do. And once they build that confidence, then they, they tend to do it at scale. And we're working with a lot of customers in, in that area. Uh, Joe, you're talking about a self-driving car. That'll never work, right? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> you know, you raise an interesting point though. Uh, you know, again, again, about kind of surrendering control a little bit. And, and Ashesh, I would assume in, in the product development world, that's very much your focus, right? You're looking for products that people not only can use, but they're also comfortable with, that, that they can accept and they can integrate and, and there's buy-in, not only on the engineering level, but also on the executive level. So maybe walk us through that product development staging or phases, however you want to put it, that you go through in terms of, of developing products that you think people not only need, but they'll also accept. I think that's absolutely right. You know, I think both uh, Stephanie and Joe led us off here, right? We talked about hybrid cloud and Joe started talking about uh, moving automation forward and getting people comfortable. I think a lot of this is, you know, meeting customers where they are and then helping them get on the journey, right? So we're seeing that today, right? So traditional configuration management on premise, but at the same time starting to think about, you know, how do we take them um, out into the cloud, bringing greater automation uh, to, to bear there. Uh, but so that's that's true for us across our existing customer base, as well as the new customers that we see out there. So 
doing that in a way that Joe talked about, right? Ensuring the, the trust but verify uh, is in play is, is critical. Uh, and then there's another area which I'm sure we'll talk a little bit more about, right? Is ensuring that security implications are taken into account as we go through it. Well, let, yeah, let's just jump into security. That's one of, of the many considerations these days. Uh, but ensuring that, that you have the secure operation, uh, you're doing some very complex tasks here, right? And you're, you're blending multi-vendor environments and multi-domain environments. I mean, you got a lot, you're, you're juggling a lot. So, so I, I guess to that extent, uh, how much of a consideration is, is security and those multiple factors today, you know, for you? And, and again, I don't know which one of the three might want to jump on this, but, but I would assume this is, this is a high priority, if not the highest priority, because of the headlines that uh, security and those challenges are garnering these days. Well, there's the, the general security uh, question and answer, right? So this is the whole, you know, shift left, DevSecOps, you know, sort of security concerns. But I think specific to this audience, you know, perhaps I can turn over to, to Joe to talk a little bit about, you know, how Ansible has been playing in the security domain. No, it's, it's a great uh, way to start, Ashash. You know, people are trying to shift left, which means move, you know, sort of security uh, earlier on in the process where people are thinking about it in the development process. Right, so we've worked with a lot of customers who are trying to do DevSecOps, right, and to provide you know security automation capabilities during application build and deployment. Then on the operational side, you have this ongoing issue of you know some vulnerability gets identified. How fast can I you know uh, secure my environment, right? So there's a whole new area of you know security orchestration, automation, and remediation that's evolved. And the challenge people have is just like with networking or other areas they've got dozens, in some cases, hundreds of different systems across their enterprise that they have to integrate with in order to be able to uh, close a vulnerability, whether it's deploying a patch or closing a you know, port or changing firewall configuration. This is really complicated and they're being measured by, okay, there's this vulnerability, how fast can we you know, get secure? And that comes down to automation, it has to. You know, Joe, you mentioned customers. If you would maybe elaborate a little bit about the customers that we've been hearing from on the on the stage, the virtual stage, if you will, at Ansible Fest this year, and maybe summarize for our audience what you're hearing from those customers and, and some of those stories uh, when we're talking about the actual use of the platform. Yeah, so Ansible Fest is our is our annual you know automation event, right? For Ansible. Um, users and um, I think it's really important here from the customers. Look, we're vendors. We can tell you anything we want, and you know, try and get you to believe it. Customers, they're actually doing stuff, right? And so at Ansible Fest, we've got a great mix of customers that are really pushing the envelope. I'll give you one example: J.P. Morgan Chase. They're talking about how in their environment, with focus over the past couple of years, they've now gotten to a level of maturity with automation where they have over 50,000 people that are using. Ansible Automation, they've got a community of practice where they've got people in over 22 countries, right, that are sharing over you know, 10,000 playbooks, right? I mean, they've taken automation strategically and embraced it and scaled it out at a level that most other organizations are envious of, right? Another one, and, and I'm not going to go through the list, but another one I'll mention is Discover, which sort of stepped back and looked at automation strategically and said, you know, we need to elevate this to a strategic area for the company. And they started looking across all different areas, not just IT automation, but business process automation on their on their practices internally. Um, and they're doing a presentation on how to basically analyze where you are today and how to take your automation initiatives forward in a strategic way. Those are usually important to other organizations that maybe aren't as far along or aren't as scaled out automation. Yeah, so Stephanie, I see you nodding your head and you're talking about when Joe was just talking about uh, as assessment, right? You have to kind of see where are we, how mature are we on our journey right now? Um, so maybe if you could elaborate on that a little bit and some of the key considerations that you're seeing from, from businesses, from, you know, clients and potential clients in terms of the kind of thought process they're going through uh, on their journey, on their evolution. I, I think there's a lot of, a lot of sort of um, values that customers are looking for when they're on their automation journey. I think efficiency is clearly one. I think one that ties back to the security discussion that we talked about, and, and I use the term consistency, but it's really about predictability. And I think I have a lot of conversations with customers that 
if they know that it's consistently deployed, particularly as, as we move out and are working with customers at the edge, how do they know that it's done the same way every time and that it's predictable? There's a ton of security and confidence built into that. And I think coming back to Joe's point, um, it, it, is a, it is a journey. Providing transparency and visibility is step one. Then taking action on that is then step two. And I think as we look at the customers who are on this automation journey, it's them understanding what's the value they're looking for. Are they looking for consistency in the deployments? Are they looking for efficiency across their deployments? Are they looking for ways to quickly migrate between areas in the open hybrid cloud? What is the, what is the value they're looking for? And then they look at how do they start to build in confidence and how they deliver that. And I think it starts with transparency. The next step is starting to move into taking action. And this is a space where Joe and the whole team along with the community have really focused on pulling together things like um, collections, right? Playbooks that folks can count on and deploy. We've looked within the portfolio. We're leveraging the capabilities of this type of automation into our products itself. With Red Hat Enterprise Linux, we've introduced systems roles. And we're seeing a lot of, um, by pulling in that Ansible capability directly into the product, it provides consistency of how it gets deployed. And there's that delivers a ton of confidence to customers. So, so Ashesh, I mean, Stephanie was talking about, you know, the customers and, and obviously uh, developing, I, I guess, cultural acceptance and, and, and political acceptance, you know, within the ranks there, you know, where are we headed here uh, past what we know now in terms of the traditional applications and traditional automations or whatever, to kind of, kind of, where is this going? If you would give me your crystal ball a bit about, uh, about automation and what's going to happen here in the next 12, 18 months. So what I'm going to do, John, is try to marry uh, two ideas. Uh, so we talked about hybrid cloud, right? So we started talking about sort of journey to hybrid cloud. Um, I'm going to marry uh, automation with containers, right? On this journey to hybrid cloud, right? And give you two examples uh, of uh, some successful progress we've been making on that front, right? Uh, number one, um, especially for, for the group here, right? Uh, check out the Ansible collection for Kubernetes. Uh, it's been updated uh, for Python 3, of course, with the end of life for Python 2. Uh, but more important, right, it's the focus on improving performance for large automation tasks, right? Huge area where Ansible shines uh, and taking advantage uh, of uh, turbo mode, uh, where instead of the default being a single connection uh, to a Kube API, uh, for every request that's uh, out there with turbo mode turned on, uh, the API connection, uh, gets reused uh, significantly, obviously improving performance. Huge uh, other set of um, enhancements as well, right? So I think that's an interesting area for uh, the Ansible community to uh, to leverage and obviously to to grow. Uh, and the second one that I want to call out was just kind of the again uh, back to this sort of you know notion of the marriage of uh, uh, automation with with containers, right? Is uh, the work that's going on. Uh, on the front of the uh, integration, the tight integration between uh, Ansible uh, as well as uh, Red Hat's advanced cluster management, right? Which is uh, helping to manage uh, Kubernetes clusters uh, at scale. Um, so now uh, Red Hat's uh, ACM technology can help uh, automatically tr uh, trigger uh, Ansible uh, playbooks uh, upon uh, key lifecycle actions that have happened. Uh, and so taking advantage of technologies like operators, again, uh, core Kubernetes constru uh, construct for the for the hybrid cloud environment. Uh, this integration between uh, advanced cluster management and Ansible allows for much more efficient execution of tasks, right? So I think that's really powerful. Uh, so wrapping that up, right? This world of uh, hybrid cloud really can be brought together by uh, just a tighter integration between work in Ansible as well as the work that's going on on the container front. Great, well, thank you. Ashesh, uh, Stephanie, Joe, uh, thank you all for sharing the time here, part of our Ansible Fest coverage here. Uh, enjoy the conversation and uh, continue success at Red Hat. Uh, thank you for the time today. Thank you. Thanks very much, Sean. You bet. Joined here by uh, three uh, executives at Red Hat talking about our Ansible Fest 2021 coverage. I'm John Walls and you're watching theCUBE.